Yeah man! Chicken Alfredo. I notice every time I cook chicken Alfredo, it, it, it's easy on my stomach. It's like my stomach is so settled. I don't know if it's evaporated milk or what, but... In other words, this meal is easy to digest. Alright, this is cheddar. Cheddar cheese. You can use mozzarella. Um, and I'm using 150 kilograms. You can break it up fine like that. Use your finger and break it up fine. Or you can get a, sh a grater and grate it. Alright, so this is what you want it to look like. Alright, so this is a chicken breast, about a pound, about half to a pound of chicken breast. I deboned it, see the bone. Just make sure you wash it off with some white vinegar and water. Now, cut your chicken breast into biteable chunks. First in some strips and then chunks. like this say about quarter inch to half inch to an inch thickness alright put this aside for later Hello, my name is Miguel and today I'm going to make for you chicken spaghetti alfredo with evaporated milk substitute. So I'm going to stack a scallion and the scallion is optional. You're going to need a small onion, half of scotch bonnet pepper or you can use any white pepper or any pepper. Um, a hundred and milli, milli, milligram, milliliters of evaporated milk it's about a cup a bit over a cup um, a cup of shredded cheese and a half to half pound of diced chicken chunks a teaspoon of sea salt less than quarter cup of coconut oil preferably for frying the chicken and we're not going to use butter today no butter And you're definitely going to need some pasta. I'm using spaghetti today. But you can use any pasta. Any kind of pasta that you like. I'm using about half of this. So about 150 milliliters. Alright. So now you take your scallion. Remove the root. End. And remove all dead leaves. Scallion been around for a while so I'm not going to get much from this. And remove and cut the tips of the leaves off. Alright, the onion now, let's remove the outer leaf and cut and remove any rotten piece, anything rotten that you see on it. Just remove the leaf now because you know, the first layer is the strongest. these off now all right so once you do that dice the scallion fine now remember now the scallion is optional you can just use onion alone 
It's just that using the scallion spruces the flavor. I didn't say it earlier, but you're going to need a tablespoon of dried basil or fresh and a tablespoon of dried parsley or fresh. So dice and slice the onions fine. Onion. Alright, the pepper now, I'm just going to use half. So I just cut half. Don't hold the inside, just hold the outside of the pepper. If you touch the inside, it's going to burn. Anything you touch, if you touch your eyes, it's going to burn it. Alright. Now, put to eat a pot that fries, that stew pot that fries, and put your stove's gauge on six, medium high. You know, we're going to fry so you can turn it up a little. Say so about six to eight. And now, after once it's dry, the once it's dry, you just add oil, coconut oil, preferably. I'm using quarter cup. Quarter cup might sound like a lot, but it's not much because the oil is the butter substitute. let it stay and get hot for a, for a minute or two or until you see a little smoke all right after a minute or two let's add the chicken chunks pieces the chicken pieces boneless chicken pieces or chunks just add them one at a time and try and put each piece Just let each piece have its own little space in the pot to fry. And just allow it to stay on one side, six between eight minutes. I should say four between six minutes, and then you're gonna flip it. All right, so now put your stove's gauge, or make sure your stove's gauge is on eight, that's like I for frying. Alright, so it's been four minutes. So I didn't move it, just let it stay on one side and then now use a, a taller fork then because oil is splashing on my hand right now and it's not comfortable. So flip the chicken each piece on the other side. You gotta use something big like this spoon that I have tall so that when you flip it it won't splash and burn as much. It's not burning, it's just a little a little steam. It's not gonna leave a scar or anything, it's just a little a little steam. Alright, so once you do that just allow it to stay on the on the other side for the next four minutes and make sure the stove is on eight eye. Alright. So you just make sure the ones in that's not browned. Oh, it's not golden brown, you flip it and allow it to stay. That's a secret to find. You can't turn turn it every minute. Or do not turn turn it every minute. Alright. Three three between four minutes more. So it's seven between eight minutes in all. Um you just kinda you, it's it's gonna it's gonna be easier to move around now. So you can just flip use a use a spoon or a fork and then kinda rotate the chicken in the pot or frying pan some of y'all I call it pan uh, 
Alright, let's let it stay. Alright, so now I'm just gonna cut the evaporated milk and get it ready. It's about a cup, a little bit over a cup. Um, it's 150 milliliters. That's what the container says. And you can use heavy cream as well. The recipe is original, is, is, is with heavy cream. But you can use evaporated milk as a substitute and it's healthier. Alright, so after the eight, about 10 minutes in all, you just add the diced onions and scallions and stir for a little while and allow it to saute. Alright, and the stove's gauge is still on eight. High. Alright, so after, after a minute, you just stir in, stirring everything. And now would be the best time to turn the stove down. Bit two between three. Just turn the stove down low. Or and add evaporated milk. Trust me guys, I know you probably used to using the heavy cream, but the evaporated milk was so delicious. And this meal is gonna be very easy on the stomach. The pepper, I'm not gonna add the pepper yet because it's gonna be hot. So add the evaporated milk, turn it up for a little while, and let's let it boil for for less than a minute. And cover your pot properly, sealed properly, and allow. All right. Stir in, and now watch the gauge of the stove because you don't want it to overflow and mess the stove up. All right. So it's been a minute, about a minute to two. All right. So let's turn it off. This is my way of cooking, it's just a method. So turn it off and allow it to soak. Just let it soak for a little while. We're gonna cook the pasta now. You could have cooked the pasta earlier and, and just cook it same time, but I like to do this and just let it just let it soak for a little while. Just watch and you'll see what I do. Alright. So get a small pot, add some water enough water and allow it to boil. You see, when you dry the bottom of the pot, it protects the stove um, um, flame thing. What's that thing called again? I forget our gauge, stove gauge. So it protects it and it also protects your pot. All right, so get your pasta ready. I'm using spaghetti today. Remember now, you can use any kind of pasta all right so once after about after two to three minutes and the water comes to boil or hot enough i like to break my spaghetti in two and lay them in but if you don't want to you can just put the spaghetti in the pot and while it cooks it will just eventually just lick you it will eventually just go down but i find that if i break the spaghetti in two I can eat it better and it's just easier to handle. Alright, so I use half of this package. So in all I think it was 150 milliliters or kilograms, I'm not sure. Alright, so pasta take 8 to 12 minutes to cook. So just allow and keep the lid half open so that it won't overflow right, the salt. Add a teaspoon to a tablespoon of sea salt preferably to the to the stew or to the salad to the pasta salad or to the alfredo alright so remember now keep the pot slightly open so so that it won't overflow uh, you see the color of the pasta change that's a sign to say it's ready when it gets white that's a sign to say it's ready so it's been eight minutes You just turn it off 
and remove the water. Alright, so you now add once you remove the water, just add it to the Alfredo stew immediately because it's gonna start sticking to the pot. So just add it as soon as you remove the water, add it. So turn your stove back on. Put your stove's gauge on four medium low and stir the spaghetti pasta in. You can add the pepper now because I just want the pepper for, for flavoring, not for my meal to be so hot that I can't heat it. Just cover it and allow. Alright, so this is what my chicken spaghetti Alfredo looks like. So it's, it's been a minute since we turned the stove back on. And you see it's thick, thickening. And people too, you can get away with using a cup to two cups of evap evaporated milk. Because maybe you want it more runny. You can get away with using it. Alright. So now, add a tablespoon of dried parsley. Or dice up fresh ones and use that. And next, add a tablespoon of dried basil. Alright, people, I know you're going to say, you notice I use herbs in all my meals, but that's the perfect opportunity for you to get herbs in your body. It won't interfere with the meal. It will probably just spruce the taste a little bit, and you benefit. So it's been two, two between three minutes. Since we turn the stove back on, you just add the cheese. I'm using a cup and a half of cheddar, cheddar cheese. Or you can use mozzarella or, you know, those type of cheese. Not salad cheese, not cheese for salad, just remember that one. Alright, so once it starts to thicken and creamed, all right, look, once you add the cheese, you, you can turn it off because it's not even 30 seconds. I turn the stove off and then stir in. The cheese, the cheese melt as you stir. The cheese will melt as you stir. So that's it. Finish. So you just remove it from over the heat because it still be cooking and you want it to stop cook. So just remove it from the heat. All right, now is the best part. Heating time. I cook this meal occasionally. That's something that I've been cooking a long time. It's new. Um, big up to the person that invented Alfredo, chicken Alfredo. It's not an original meal by me. So I don't know that person, but big yourself up. It's a nice meal, a really nice meal. And it's hearty. When you heat this, you feel like you're full for a week. Figuratively, I'm speaking though. Alright, so this is my chicken spaghetti Alfredo. Evaporated milk substitute. And remember now, you can use every cream instead if you don't want to use evaporated milk. Alright, let's taste this thing. Alright, see, I was taking some pictures so it kind of kind of do that so stir the teen little some cream if I up some more mm. well anybody that knows what Alfredo tastes like this is Alfredo I think this the taste is a little bit enhanced because I used natural organic vegetables to spruce the flavor all right, so chicken. So you just, you see why I like the spaghetti? I just eat, I can get a lot more in my mouth. <laughs> With a
the pasta now you have to eat one at a time the spaghetti now you just twirl and you get a whole bunch in your mouth one time and just enjoy this meal is good Caribbean people Jamaican people that don't know about try it with the evaporated milk it's a very affordable tool um, I know in our country the heavy cream is is expensive use evaporated milk it's awesome I'm not just saying it is all right so this is leftovers I had it on the stove for about three four hours I'm gonna heat this now so what I'm gonna do is put it to heat and just allow it to see this is what it look like cooled so just cover it turn the stove on low and for leftovers you can keep it in the fridge for no more than two days in the bottom you probably can freeze it for for like three weeks or two weeks but we like fresh food so don't because the chicken's not gonna taste as fresh and nice frozen chicken never usually tastes good to me frozen cooked chicken chicken frozen cooked chicken usually never tastes good to me all right so it's been about five minutes since it's been on low just just warming up and this is what it looks like and the aroma oh all right so this is warm now i'm getting ready to turn it off and have the rest of this chicken spaghetti alfredo bye yeah, man!